Yes. And the first thing at the top is do not disturb. Okay? And uh, uh, again, so I'm going to hit that, and this is what comes up. And I have scheduled my iPhone to be on do not disturb from 10 p.m. until 10 a.m. That's my permanent setting. If I get a phone call after 10 or before 8 in the morning, my phone doesn't ring. Okay? Um, I don't get any text messages, I don't get any beeps in the middle of the night, and so on. However, there is a way to, um, there are some safety features built in. If you'll notice at the bottom, I have repeat call enabled. When enabled, a second call from the same person within three minutes will not be silenced. So if anybody calls me, hangs up and calls me again within three minutes, it'll come through the second time. Okay? That's going to be great until tell telemarketers figure that out. Yeah. Uh, the other one that you can set, which I, I have set, is you can allow calls from a specific contact or group of contacts. Um, you'll notice on mine I have allow calls from favorites. Now who do I have in my favorites? Well, I have my wife and I have all of our children and a couple other key people. So if they call me, even though I have it on do not disturb, with the timing thing, their calls will come through. Because I've deemed them to be calls that I don't want to have a lot. Um, I think the next screen shows that. So here is where you would select that. Um, you can select no one. You can select everyone. You can select uh, favorites. Or you can select groups. I have several groups of contacts. Um, you can only select one group at a time. I tried to select more than one today and wouldn't let me do that. So that's a really nice feature. It's available on the iPad as well, but you generally aren't interrupted uh, as much on your iPad as you are with the phone. Any questions on that? Okay. Uh, let me see, I, I, I've got a couple other things, I think. Yeah, this is the phone. Okay, now we're going to go to the phone at the bottom, um, left-hand side. I want to show you the new phone keypad. I'm sure that a lot of you have seen this if you've updated your phone. Took me a minute to get used to this. It's, it's the same, it's just the color scheme is a little different. Uh, I still like the old color scheme better. They didn't ask me. Um, okay, and then this is a nice feature. That's my lovely wife. Um, I put this message on there. I'll comment on that. Uh, I created a PDF of her picture. And then in one of the apps I have, it allows you to put text on there. And I put this, please call if found. And that's her cell phone number. Uh, there is one time that I left my phone somewhere. I left it in Publix right up the street. Uh, and I didn't realize it for a couple hours. I went to my computer and hit find my phone uh, and immediately realized it was sitting up in public somewhere. Uh, if you don't have find my phone turned on, you need to turn it on. I'll show you how to do that. Um, and you can send a message that says, uh, makes a noise, locks your phone, and says, please call uh, this number. The problem is that uh, I did that when I got home to see what it looked like. The message is in such small type that you'd have to be 20 years old to read it. Uh, so I decided that I would just permanently put something bigger on it. Uh, so uh, this is what I did. But the reason I have, that, uh, that's a side comment, the reason I really have this up here is that there is another couple of nice features, and I mentioned these earlier. Uh, I had my wife call me this morning because I was trying to do some of these quick demos on this. And so the call comes through and the old decline answer is right there. But you'll notice there's this phone down on the right hand side, two lines above it. If you swipe up on that, 
this is what happens. Okay? Now, I tried to take pictures of the screens when you hit reply with a message or reply with um, later, but as soon as I did that, hit the picture thing, the screen went blank, so I couldn't, can't show it. I think I have it in another uh, presentation, uh, I might get it up. But I mentioned that one of the things you can do is you can send a text message. There are three or four that's all, that are already programmed in, it's one, and one is I'll call you later, I'm busy, or something like that. Um, and that's where you get those. Okay, and, or remind me later if you hit that one, or, uh, screen pops up and it says when, an hour, half an hour, whatever. And it will automatically give you an intrusive alert. Hey, Paul, uh, Karen, and now. Yes? This is only the iPhone 5. iPhone 5, iPhone 4S. Should work on the 4S as well. I don't know about the um, 3S. So. Okay, any more questions on that for right now? Ah, yes, let's go over those settings, okay. So let's, how do you, the question was, how do you uh, set up Find My Phone? You go to settings, so I'm gonna hit settings at the bottom left there, the wheel. And this comes up and you go down to the iCloud, which is third from the bottom on the left, iCloud. And you'll see that I have Find My Phone on. Now, also you'll see at the top, I have an iCloud account. You've got to have an iCloud account set up, which is free for five gigabytes of storage to use that feature. And you, and you can also set it up on your, on your uh, computer at home. If you have Mountain Lion, I don't know if it'll work on Lion, will it, George? Not sure. Not sure if it'll work with Lion. Uh, but Mountain Lion will work. So I've got, I can find my 27-inch desktop machine. I can find my laptop. I can find my iPad, my iPhone, and so on. <coughs> I have them all set up under the same uh, iCloud number up there. Um, so that's how you set that up. Here, I'll show you about storage. Okay, um, so it says, actually I had a mobile me account, and if you had a mobile me account, you were a primary user, they gave you 25 gigs of storage for a couple of years um, instead of five. Everybody gets at five for free. Uh, you'll notice that I have 18.9 available. If I want, if I go to this manage storage, it'll tell me where I'm using the storage. So I'm using. Uh, and I only have, uh, I mentioned my wife has an iPhone and she has an iPad. She has a different Apple ID. So, because uh, she has her own mail and her own stuff, and I've got my own stuff. And we don't, if you, have, if you use the same Apple ID, then um, there can be privacy issues between the two parties. Um, the, uh, we do share the same Apple ID for purchases, though. So we have one Apple ID for purchases so that we don't have to buy apps twice. And then we have each our own Apple ID for the cloud. Does that make sense? Okay. So for me, it says that I've got four gigabytes of storage for my iPhone, and I've got 1.7 gigabytes that I'm using for my iPad 3. Does anyone know why the iPhone is so much larger, has so much larger storage than the iPad? You would think just the opposite. Does anybody know? Okay. It's because the, um, the backup that's done in the cloud saves your photos that you've taken on that device plus videos. 
And what a lot of people will do is they will take videos with their can't with their uh, iPhone, not their iPad, and they'll upload them to their computer and they won't delete them from their phone. And so it eats up your storage. And I have some I have some on there that I need to delete. If I deleted them, I can easily get that down to um, probably 1.5 gigabytes. So if you see that number getting large, it means you've got a lot of videos you've taken that the best thing to do is transfer those to your computer and delete them from your iPhone. Any, any questions on that? Sort of some people overlook. Yes, Don? Can they be transferred wirelessly? No, they cannot. Movies cannot be transferred wirelessly. Just photos. Just photos. Photos on my we go with the photo stream, but um, you have to actually connect to your computer and import those movies. Thank you. Yes. Okay, then it will show me where I'm using the storage, but it only shows it for the device that you're looking at currently. So this is my, uh, obviously this is the iPad that I have um, plugged in, and so it's showing where the storage is. If I had my iPhone plugged in and up on that screen, uh, it would show that uh, movies was the big thing. Uh, photos and movies was huge. Okay, it also shows, um, let's go back, it'll show when it was last backed up. Mine was last backed up at 12.30 uh, or 12.58 a.m. yesterday. Now what happens is, is that every night, I plug my uh, iPad in to be charged. I pretty much go through it, it's down to 40 or 50% every day. So I plug it in at night and just let it charge up. When it's plugged in, in my house, in Wi-Fi, it automatically backs up every night. And so will your phone. If you're one of these people that doesn't use your phone often and, and you charge it in your house, in Wi-Fi, that's the two things and you have iCloud storage turned on, it'll automatically back it up. If you don't charge your phone once every two or three days, it'll back it up every two or three days. Any questions on that? You can also push the button back up now, and it'll back it up right now, as long as you're in Wi-Fi, you have to be in Wi-Fi. Yes? Backing, backing it up, in order to back it up, you need to be in Wi-Fi, because the cloud works only in Wi-Fi. Okay, so to get back to here, that was an excellent question. I want to take a second and go over uh, updates. Now, this is my wife's phone again. Um, it, it, these updates to iOS come periodically. There was one that came out two or three weeks ago. It was called iOS 6.0.1. Um, now, when they first come out, people like me and George and uh, people that are crazy about this stuff, uh, I'll get, probably get about 300 emails, uh, blogs a day on, on this kind of stuff. And you think, boy, that's a lot to go through. But I go through 300 in about 10 or 15 minutes a day because there's only about 10 or 15 out of the 300 that I'll look at. Um, but I'll see one. I'll be flashing through an iOS 6. Point whatever was just released. Oh, when I get home, I plug it in and I update it. If, you, if it was released today and you don't do the update in about a week or a week and a half, all of a sudden, you'll notice that you've got a number one on the settings. You see it there in the middle of her phone? Um, okay, so you say, well, what's that? So I'm gonna hit on that settings on her phone, and it takes me to this page, and oh, there's a number one by the general. See it? What's that? There's a number one in the general? Oh, there's a software update. Okay, see that? Anybody here see this on their device right now? Yeah, okay. 
You're the ones I want to know what this is. Can I, yes. can I ask you a question? About yes. I, my phone would accept that I was six months past. Well, is there a disadvantage in going ahead and updating the phone without having an update pad? Why, why won't you pad? Is it a, it's, it's the, the original? Pad. It's the original? Yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, a lot of the functions on the original are not going to work on the, on the, um, uh, are just not going to work. So I don't think, are they disadvantages? They don't talk to each other anyhow. I, I would check with the Apple Store, but I don't think there's any disadvantage. I mean, the big thing is, is if you have the one, you would notice it, uh, the, I, the iPad one, you notice a huge difference in going to the new four that it's just, it's just about coming out. In other words, don't be so cheap, right? <laughs> well, uh, it's not, don't be so cheap. It, I have to have every new thing out. I have, although I have, don't have the four, I probably won't get it. But I've been able to sell my old ones for half price and give them to a grandkid. And just, uh, after two or three generations of, of having the same phone or same iPad, it really is time to move up. Yes? Yes. Well, can you repeat uh, the question, please? Yeah, question about a question. If you go into the Apple store, who are you going to ask? Um, I'm in there so frequently, they say hi to me every time I come. Can you go in person? I go in person, yes. You can call them. There's a help number. I'll give you the help number. Um, I'll pull that up in a minute. Remind me of that. I'll pull that up later. Uh, but you can call them, and they're very good. They're just going to want your serial number on your device. Um, now, if your device is out of warranty, they're not as friendly in talking with you. They'll tell you it's out of warranty and, and so on. Um, I always buy it's an the extended warranty on the computer. Uh, so mine's covered for two years. I don't buy it on the iPad. Yeah, I buy it, I buy it on both. Um, but they're very friendly on the phone, yes. When I have problems in the past, I just Google the question. Yes. And then they get to a block. Yep. And then the people go, oh yeah, I had that too. Here's what I found fixed. Yes. That's, a, that's an excellent point I always like to mention in this uh, kind of setting, that Google can be your best friend. If you don't know an answer to a question uh, on a computer, on an iPad, or an iPhone, Google it, and you'll get the answer. Yes, George. The other thing you might want to do is, uh, well, if you Google it, you'll get a YouTube movie in many cases that will answer your question. So you can visually an answer. Now, there's, a, there's an iTube, there's a YouTube movie probably for every single question that you would ever have. If you go, if you go to YouTube and just type in, like, uh, let's say you had a question about notifications, uh, you would just type in iPhone notifications on, on YouTube's search, and you get all kinds of videos that come up, and the way I usually start selecting them is I look at how many views they get. If they've had 50,000 views, it's something I look at. If they've had two or 3,000 views, it's probably not as good. Uh, that's, that's a really good point, George. Uh, yes? Hi. I don't know whether I have aisle 6 on this or not. This is six weeks old. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna, let, me, let, me, let me show you that. Let me get to that in just one minute, okay? okay. Okay, so once you see this number one software update, you hit oh, software update, and this is what you get. It says, ah, oh, there's an update, okay? And then on the iPhone, it will ask you to install a, 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 a downloader. It doesn't do this on the iPad. You install that, and then it comes up, there it is, iOS downloader, bottom app there. Um, now, uh, that, uh, you just hit on that and update. While this page is up, I want to point out one other thing that I was uh, wanting to cover later anyhow. One of the new features that they've made available is when you download a new app and it has not been opened yet, it says new. So you see that iTunes U and podcast? Those are new apps that she has on her phone that she has never opened. 
Okay. So you hit the download or uh, iOS update, and then this is, comes up. You say download, install. I agree to everything, and then it starts installing. You need to be plugged in to the outlet to do this, and you need to be in Wi-Fi to do it. Okay? You need to be plugged in, and you need to be in Wi-Fi. Okay, now, let's go to how, you, how are you going to figure out the version that you have. Whenever you call Apple, they'll say, well, what's your serial number, or what version are you working on? Uh, on an iDevice, you go to the settings, again, that's the wheel at the bottom, and you go to the general tab right there in the middle, and you go to the about. When, it go, when you go to about, it tells me about three quarters of the way down version 6.0.1. It also shows me, um, on further down, the serial number, which if you call Apple, they'll want your serial number. And you give them the serial number and they say, oh yes, Mr. Smith, you're under warranty, we see you're under Apple Care warranty, or you're under the 90 day call plan, then they'll talk to you all day. If they say, well, this device is out of warranty, I don't think they're gonna answer any questions for you. So, thank you. Did you have, what was your question, sir, again? How do you speak to him? Yeah. Okay. He, okay. Let me pull up that telephone number. Um, also, I think anybody can schedule a appointment. Okay. Apple Care, that's the number. Want to jot that down? Uh, and put it right in your address book. That's what I suggest. I actually put a note in there. It's an old note. Set up help and computer help. Um, but that is the telephone number. Everybody got that? Okay, so uh, you asked about the keyboard. Um, 
So, let the keyboard's up right now, okay? Yeah. Now, and this is this is anywhere. It's an email of anywhere, okay? Yeah. If you you see the keyboard over on the bottom right hand corner with the arrow right down there, okay? You hit that and it disappears. Everybody see it? I'm gonna touch it. Touch it, it's gone. Okay? Now, I'll make it come back up again. Hit a field, okay? And now it's back up again. Now, um, one other, uh, I'll show you a couple of keyboard tricks here. Uh, one of them is, um, is to do caps. If you do caps, you see the arrow, either the arrow buttons on the left or the right. I tend to use the one on the left. If I touch that one time, it turns blue. And then if I start typing, it'll, it'll type and, it'll, and, and the blue will go off. So the next letters will be small. See how they are? Okay, now, but if I touch that and hold it down, oh, I hit it twice, it'll turn real blue. And now when I type, it'll be all caps. And to stop that, I just touch it again. That's a little trick. Now, one more trick, uh, and these are all in the book. Uh, these all should be in that book I wrote. One other trick that I use quite often is, is, is I'll use, I want to do an explanation point. Um, and normally, you know, you'd have to go to here to symbols and then hit the explanation point there by the quote line. Okay, the other way to do it is if you see the comma, uh, not the explanation point, the uh, asterisk, or the uh, apostrophe. If you see where the comma and the explanation point is, if I hold my finger on that and go up, it's there. And now you see it, it appeared on this screen right by the G. Yeah, that's an extra feature. Now, and on this one, uh, and, on, and on the question mark one, it, it gives you quotes. Okay? See it? And when you move up, that's what you get. There's a few others that, um, those are the two that I use the most often. Huh? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. There's a lot of things like that, so it's worth just glancing at that book. Yeah, if you just page through the book, you'll see things and you'll say, hey, why do you know about this? And um, it is free. Okay, well, let's see. It's uh, 10.15. We've got 45 minutes, and I, I have to tell a little bit of a story at this point in time. Because I see some people nodding off. Um, Which one are uh, Yeah, if I, if I tell George, it hits him with a stick. Uh, but no, I was at uh, Mass the other Sunday, and uh, there was an elderly, uh, a senior citizen, uh, sitting in Mass. And he was thinking to himself, he looked up and he saw the confessional. And he was thinking, gee, what is this? You know, wow, it's not a confession. So after Mass, I ought to get over there and go. So sure enough, after Mass, he goes over and he goes into the confessional. And here is this big leather recliner, big widescreen TV with a football game going on, well-stocked bar, and on this side, there's a table with some nice snacks, and with that, the uh, priest comes in, and he said, Father, he said, uh, you know, he says, it's been, I have to tell you, it's been about 20 years since I've been to confession, he says, you have really made some improvements, and the priest said, yes, we have, my son, you're on the wrong side. <laughs>
and message alerts for people who have iPhones or, or iPads, you get a text message and it'll go through a link, or I got the choo-choo, my notes choo-choo, you can set whatever you want. But um, if you go to settings at the bottom right, and um, let's see, go into settings and go into the uh, notifications. Notifications, we've been there before. To be the same on the iPad. And you see where it says messages. Uh, so you hit on messages. I happen to have it in notification center, so I'm getting, getting messages. And I hit on that, and this comes up. And so you notice that it, the yes, in fact, I do have it turned on. I have show the last 10. So when I pull down on my phone, it will show the last 10. I have a, it will show in the banner mode. Uh, you can choose none, alert, or banner mode. Uh, I have icon, and the icon is the number that appears. Number one, there was a software update, you had a little one there. You've got unread text messages, that means it'll have the number there that are unread. And you'll notice that the text tone that I've chosen is choo choo. If you want to change yours, if you hit that setting right there for the text tone, you'll have about 30 or 40 to choose from. And then right below that, so here we are, choo choo, and I just went down further on the screen. Um, and I want to go to. Uh, Show a couple things. If you have show preview, then when somebody sends you a text message, two or three lines are going to appear on your phone. Now, you might not want two or three lines to appear on the phone. Um, it might be your daughter or your son texting you and saying, hey, the surprise birthday party is on for Dad. And all of a sudden that appears, and Dad's sitting right there, and he sees it. So the way to uh, not have that show is to change this setting to uh, show preview off. And then it would just say that you got a text message from your son Jeff or your daughter Susie or whatever. That's all it would have, it's just the name. And then you go to the text message to read it. So it's a privacy issue, that's where you do that. Um, then at the bottom you can uh, also, just show text message alerts for everyone, or you can just show it for contacts. Um, now, uh, then there's a view in lock screen mode, if you want to view the, see, see the text, me text message alerts in lock screen mode. I have mine on. The one thing I wanted to go to, because it was a question the other week in our group about repeat alerts. And I have mine set to, uh, it's, it's now set to none, but I had it set to one. I want to go to that. So when you go to that, right in the middle of the scheme, screen, repeat alerts, it says once. Here's the selections. So what does that mean? That means that if you have it never, and you have it set to choo-choo, it's going to choo-choo one time. Never means it's going to just tell you once. If you have it for once, then it's going to repeat one more time in about 30 seconds or a minute. Okay? The, the intent for this is that for people who are, 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 uh, want to know that they've received this or if it's available in other things like mail or so on, um, and these change from different applications, but in text messaging, the intent of having the repeat was, well, if you left the room and came back, then you would hear it again. Okay? So that's where that's changed. Okay. Let's get out of here. Yes? Is it possible that the choo-choo thing is only on the more recent? I've heard five. I thought it was on five. I had it on five. Come see me after the meeting if you're here. Um, Okay, let's talk about, I want to talk about the camera a little bit on the iPhone. Uh, they uh, added a great new feature called Panorama. And um, I've got some examples of that. Here are some photos that I took while out 
in Utah a few weeks ago. So this is a regular photo. And then I took a panoramic photo. You see it, it really pulls it in much wider. Here's another one that's even much wider. And as you do much wider, they get, they get smaller and smaller in terms of the height. And then there's just a, a regular one again, and there's a panoramic of the same thing. That's actually, uh, I was on a hike, and that's a ski slope. That's what they look like in the summer, just grassy. Okay. Now, the way you do that, I don't think I have it up here, but when you when you go to take a picture, there's a at the top it'll say, say options, and, and you hit that. And one of the settings is panoramic, and you just go ahead and you just you hit that panoramic, and a line comes up, and you just and, you, and, a, and an arrow comes or a dot comes up at the bottom to start taking the picture. You hit the dot, and you just take the camera and go like this. Uh, and it'll come up. I guess I could probably uh, do one of those real quick. And show you what the picture will look like. So, I'm just going to take a, uh, just a regular picture right here. And then I'll do options, panoramic. <laughs> Done, you're done. It'll allow you to do like 180 degrees of camera light and you're all here. Uh, and those pictures I'll show you in a little bit because they will appear on this iPad in a little bit. And I'll bring them up. So that's panoramic, and that was a big thing in the new uh, the new iOS 6. There were a lot of apps that did before this in Apple Phone, you just put it in. Any questions on that? Yes. <laughs> iPhone only. Uh, no, it's not on I never take pictures from my iPad. I don't. Is it on the iPad? Can you check, George? Is it? Okay. Okay, so. Let's. Uh, Let's, let's talk about mail. We talked about mail a little bit. Okay. Let's just see what we're doing here. Okay, so here's mail, and this will be the same on the iPhone. So mail right at the bottom. Uh, you notice it says five there. That means there's five messages that I haven't uh, read yet. And again, that's the way that's set up is uh, in notifications. Remember the, uh, uh, if I had any text messages or so on. Um, it, would, it would show those as well. So I'm going to go to the mail. And when I do, this comes up and this shows all my mailboxes. And you'll notice that uh, on the left hand side it has VIP with a star. And it has flag. Uh, let's talk about VIP first. It's, well, how do you set those up? How do you set up people as VIPs? Well, what you do is hit the arrow. Not VIP, but hit the arrow. When you hit the arrow, this will come up. And these are the people that I have as VIPs. Okay? Um, right now. Now, if, if, if you haven't set any up, what yours is going to say is add VIPs. And if you hit add, then your contacts come up and everybody that has a contact with an email address is eligible to be set up as a VIP. And if you set them up as a VIP, if they have five email addresses, all five will be gathered. The person is actually tagged as a VIP. So if you, and if you want to delete these, if you hit the edit button at the top and want to remove any, 
this comes up. You notice there's minus signs by all those names. And I would just hit the minus sign to delete anybody I want to delete. Okay. <coughs> now, let's uh, go back out and get into my mailbox for real. So, here it is for real, and I'll go through it. Uh, here's my VIPs, and let's say I want to add one, so I'm going to hit the add VIP. Okay, add VIP, and I'm going to add Rob and Kay Adams. Add Rob and Kay, and now they're there. You see them? Okay. Now, oh, I made a mistake, I want to get rid of them. So I hit the edit button at the top. The arrows appear. And now I delete them. Okay? Now, um, you can also set up, uh, we're done. You can also set up alerts. Now, if you hit that alerts button, it takes you right to notifications. And um, you can. I don't have it turned on. But if I had it turned on, uh, I could get it to play a sound when I get a, a, an email from that particular important person, or all, from all my important persons, or so on. I just don't think I need that. Okay. Okay, now. Let's go back in the mail for just a minute. So here are all my VIP mails. Okay? It just gathers them all together. I mean it gathers them all together going back from, you know, here's some that were last April. Okay? Uh, just keeps them all in one file. Notice some of them are flagged. Because I flagged them because um, it was, uh, it was important. Okay. Now, it does not take them out of the mailbox. So if I go to here and go to my mailbox, you're going to see this one. Here, here's Marilyn right there. Uh, or at the top. There she is. And you notice the star by the email. She's a VIP person. So it would appear in the regular mailbox, and also all of them will appear together in the VIP area. Okay. It's the same for the flagged. Here's one that's flagged. Red Bath and Beyond. Find out if you find that was important. And then you know, that would appear if I go out here into the flagged area. There it is. There it is. Okay, just summarizes them all together. So those are, those are pretty nice features. I use them quite a bit. Now, the other way, the other thing that you can do, this is a little trick. If you decide, let's pull up um, this one from Don, Tom and Don. If I decide, oh, you know, I really wanted to make Tom and Donna a, uh, a VIP, I can go right here and touch on Tom and Donna, and it'll come up, and you'll see almost to the bottom it says add to VIP. I just hit add to VIP, okay, notice the star is now in front of their name, and I'm done. Now, when I go out to VIP, okay, Tom and Donna are there. Okay, so that's another way to do it. Hit edit, I really don't want Tom and Donna there, so I'm going to delete Any questions on that? I have a question, Tom, Yes. But when I go in and my 
relief from one thing, and then fail to leave like five of my contacts. So my, uh, five of them. When I sink, they want to make sure they sink, they, they just keep scrambling back and forth. So I can't find that kind of make one like the uh, teacher or the master. Okay. Uh, okay, the question is, is that, you know, if you have three devices, a computer, an iPhone, and an iPad, and you want to delete contacts, uh, one, how does it, or add, how does it get them to all the others? And that is an I, iCloud function. So, you have to have iCloud on, on all three devices. You have to be in the same iCloud account. And you have to uh, have a mountain lion don't have mount line on your computer, your computer will not sync to those contacts. So let me go in to settings again. You go into iCloud. The first thing is, is that your iPhone and your iPad need to have the same email address up there. Okay? Then the next thing is, is that you need to have checked off mail, contacts, calendars, or whatever it is you want to send. And you need to do the same thing on your computer, your Mount Lion, and, and, and I believe it's in uh, preferences uh, in Mount Lion. Uh, 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 Mount Lion is an operating system for uh, uh, an Apple computer. I don't know if it will work with Windows. Do you? Who does? Okay, so it works for Windows. Any particular version of Windows you have to have? Yes. It works for Vista. Vista? It works for Vista. It works for anything. Vista didn't work for much. Uh, okay, so yeah, I don't know how to do it. It's set up, but they would know how to do that in the Genius Bar. So if one of your Apple devices is uh, still under warranty, or even if it's not, I go to the Genius Bar, take your computer, take your all your devices, and just say, I think it's all the same. You don't have that. Okay. So let me uh, get back into here and see what else I want to cover real quick. Oh, let's talk about this pass, passport uh, thing. It's only on the iPhone. That's what it looks like about halfway down right next to the maps. It says Passbook. And that was the new thing. It's, it's automatically in iOS 6 on the phone only that gathers all your um, gift cards if, they, if they're wired up with them. Uh, the only one I have that is so far is Starbucks. And I'm going to show some of that. Now the thing I, again that I don't like about this is that when you set it up, um, anybody grabs your phone, they can just hit pass. If your phone's unlocked, and you don't have a passcode on your phone, they can just hit it and get into your cards. Uh, this is what it looks like. You hit it, and I have only have Starbucks in there, and this is what comes up. Um, now, if I hit the Starbucks app, the Starbucks app has a, uh, I've set a password for it, which is an option on the app. So it says, what's your password? You put the password in, and then the Starbucks app comes up. Um, and the way I got it into the past well, is, um, is one of the options down here at the bottom. And one of them is uh, to add a passbook. I think it's on the home. Or under manage. And you just push the button. And it'll be here and it'll be a passbook as well. But I took it out of passbook because I didn't like the fact that there wasn't a, a passcode to get into there. Um, so, now, when you have it in the passbook and you want to know how to delete it, you hit the, there's an I on the first screen. Go back to that. 
You see that I at the bottom, right hand side? Uh, I would hit the I if I put it into Bass Books. And this screen comes up, and you hit the garbage can, and it deletes it. And then when you delete it, if you have nothing in there, which probably a lot of you don't have anything in there, and you hit that icon, this is what it's going to show right now. Um, now, I actually took a photo shot of one that, uh, from a book I was reading that showed several things that were available. So if I had more than Starbucks, it would show them all. This particular guy has Target, he has Fandango, Starbucks, Amtrak, the Apple Store, United Airlines, and um, some game tickets for baseball. So it's great if you've gotten all those things on your phone, it's a great place to collect them all, which is the intent. But again, this password thing is troublesome to me. Um, oh, I had that in there. Okay, yes, okay. If you go if you go into notifications. And you go down to Passbook Banner at the bottom. Um, and one of the things you can do is you can show uh, view and lock screen. And that, I think, is the default setting. So that means if your phone is uh, locked, these things will show. And they'll pop up. So if you walk into Starbucks, it, even if your phone is locked, it'll come up. Um, I turned that off on my phone. And again, I took Starbucks out of it. I didn't like the fact that it didn't have a security code. So I turned that view and lock screen at the bottom off. I think eventually Apple's going to have a secondary password to get into this. So just uh, about Safari for a minute. There's some interesting things in Safari enhancements. So I'm going to go to Safari, which is down at the bottom there, next to the 44. And this is the iPhone. It will be the same on the, well, it's a little bit different on the iPad. That's why we've got both of them on here. And they've got a new feature called Cloud Tabs. And the way you get to it is you get to it in the menus area. You have to be all the way out to the beginning menu. Somebody was showing me their phone and they couldn't find this and it was because they were in bookmarks or something and they had to keep on pressing the arrow out until they got to this list. When you get to this list, it's the third thing down and it's called iCloud Tabs. It's new with iOS 6. If I go to that, it will show me the Safari pages that I have open on other iDevices or Apple computers. Won't show it for, I don't think it'll show it for a, a, a Windows computer. So on this page, what it shows is that on my MacBook Pro number eight, uh, I have these pages open. Now I can literally just hit on the page and it'll come up. So if I was in the middle of buying an iTunes card for somebody and I had to leave and I got to work or wherever I was going, I could pull out my phone or my iPad and I could hit that iTunes thing. It would open right up to that web page, right where I left off, and I could continue on, which is pretty neat. And also then at the bottom it shows uh, a second iPad that I have and what's open on that one. Now, on the iPad, it's a little different. On the iPad, I'm going to hit uh, Safari, which is at the far left at the bottom. And the, this comes up, and I happen to be looking at this uh, Amazon site. But you'll notice in the top menu bar, right next to the bookmark, right, right next to the open book, there's a cloud. Everybody see that cloud up there, top left? 
When you hit on the cloud, this is what happens. Same thing. So on the iPhone, you have to sort of go look at it in the um, in the uh, menu area. But uh, here, you just hit the cloud. The same thing comes up. Now, I, uh, the other thing you could do is if I'm in this tab, which happens to be the Amazon tab that I have open, if I put my finger on that back arrow at the top, right to the far left, and hold my finger there, it'll show the history of what was opened in that tab. And I can go back to any page I want just by swiping on down. That's a new feature as well. Any questions on that? Is there a way to get rid of all of those things? Yes. Just close the, um, you, there's a couple ways. One way is to just close that tab. So let me show that. So here's the actual, uh, if I go ahead and hold my finger on this arrow, it comes up with that history, okay? Now, the way to get rid of that is just tap on the page, but if I want to get rid of that history, you see the Amazon in the middle with the X in the black right up at the top? Okay? If I hit that X, it will close that tab completely. Now it's gone. Okay? All right. Now, um, let's go back into here and see if I got time to do one or two more of these. I'm going to go over this privacy browsing business. Um, if you go into um, there's a setting in Safari on, on both your iPad and your iPhone called Privacy Browsing. Now, if you have Privacy Browsing on, it will not appear in that cloud drop-down. Okay? Um, that I just went over. And you'll notice that my two computers appeared, but my iPhone and my iPad did not appear. Um, and so a lot of people are concerned about privacy, so they want to have that privacy browsing uh, turned on or, or turned off. If it's, if it's turned off as it is in this, on this page, right in the middle there, privacy off, then those items will show. Let me go back out and show you those because I actually have them on now. Okay, so... This shows my, uh, notice at the top it says, Mitch Breyer's iPhone. Now on my iPhone in Safari, those are the web pages that I have opened. And I can go to any one I want, I just hit on them. I'm going to hit on the Apple Retail Store. And that'll come up. I'm not going to wait for it to come up. Time, but you get the point now. So, again, going back to that, going back to that setting. If you have that setting off, that stuff will appear. If you're sharing the same iCloud ID with your spouse, uh, significant other, whoever, they can go in on their device see what web page you've got open. So if you're shopping for Christmas form, they're going to know what you're buying. <laughs> and a lot of people want to just keep that, keep that private. So the way to keep it private is to turn it off. If you don't care, you can leave it on. If they're on a different Apple ID uh, and don't have access to your computers, you can leave it on. It doesn't matter. Um, 
Here's just a, a page, and what it looks like when it's turned on. Okay. Now, oh, here's the other thing. When it's turned off, on the iPad and on the iPhone, the top of the screen, you notice it's all white up there? Okay? That's when it's turned off, it's all white. When it's turned on, it turns black. You see that? Something I learned yesterday. Does everybody see that? So, it's black, it's on. If it's white, you know it's off. And, and I've pretty much gone through the things that I wanted to highlight, so uh, let me just see if there's anything else I missed. I don't think so. So, yes, questions. Any general questions? Any general questions? <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, we got some hands here. Let's see. Let's take this gentleman here. Can you move things manually to the cloud? But, I mean, like an app or... or Anything, any program? Uh, can you move things manually to the cloud? No, it's all done automatically. Uh, you can, now, you can, if you're, if you're in the settings area and you go to the cloud, you can check what things you want to go to the cloud. Uh, you know, like I've got checked, uh, I want my mail and I want my contacts and I want my calendar and so on. Is it going to, it's going to take memory in both places then? It's going to take, eat up memory in the cloud and... It will take up space in the cloud. It doesn't take up a lot of space. Five gigabytes of space. Like I say, you'll never use it all unless you start taking movies. And the easy way to stop that is to just turn off the photos. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yes, we had another question. Yes. Uh, what wireless printer I would re recommend? Well, um, an e-printer, any e-printer will work with an iPhone or an iPad without doing anything else. I know, I think Epson makes one now. I'm not sure, I know HP makes e-printers. HP makes them. Uh, a good place to shop for printers, they have a lot of them, is Best Buy. And the prices really aren't that bad. Um, but you want an e-printer. Uh, if you don't get an e-printer, then you need to, you can get any printer. Like I have a Canon, uh, I forget the number, but I like it quite a bit. It's not an e-printer, but I bought a program called Printopia uh, that goes on your computer. And if you have Printopia on your computer, and your computer is on, it will print wirelessly to my printer. I don't use fax, so I can't recommend the fax machine. What uh, about a printer with a fax machine? Is there a particular one I recommend? I don't know. The best, the best place, I mean, the place that I buy that type of thing is usually Costco, because they have the best return policy. I think it's the best marketing and the best of everything, and usually the best price. But um, you, want, you want an all in one printer. Correct. Right. You just go to Costco and they probably no, have an E all in one HP. Right? E all in one HP. Yes. Is an E printer different than a wireless printer? An E printer is a wireless printer in all cases. An e, the E means that it will uh, it will handle the, the iPhone and the iPad files. Your network. Oh. I, not every Epson makes a, a, a wireless printer that we printer, it just did not get. Oh, is that right? Yes. Okay, well then. Not every printer is compatible with Better check then. If it's not compatible, then it's a wireless printer, then you have to go out and buy Printopia and do it the way I explained. Yes. How does one update from, let's say, 5.1? 
Okay, again, uh, uh, to do that, you need to be first plugged into a, uh, 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 an outlet, like you're charging your device. You need to be in a Wi-Fi zone. It can be your Wi-Fi zone or any Wi-Fi zone. And you need to go to settings and general, and then uh, the second item down uh, should be software, and uh, hit that and then hit update. Now, if you're going from five to six, I think the first time you have to be plugged into your computer, right? Yeah. Five to six? No. No. Okay. You shouldn't have to plug into your computer to do it. And when in doubt, go to, go to the Apple Store, to the Genius Bar, and say I'm having you trouble updating. You have to be on Wi-Fi. You have to be on Wi-Fi. You have to be on Wi-Fi. If you're having trouble with it at all, go to the Apple, make an appointment at the Genius Bar and just say, I'm having trouble updating the latest iOS version. Is it worth doing? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Don? You didn't show, you might, is there anyone who doesn't know how to rearrange your icons or to make a folder to put more than one icon or more than one application in a folder? Anybody know how to do that? Do you want me to go over that real quick? Okay. Or to uh, do the double tap and cancel out the things on the bottom to recover memory. Yeah, okay, good. Those are good points. Um, let's do the folders first. So, let's just pretend that uh, here's some folders. Okay, here's a financial folder. There's all the apps that I have in that financial folder. Okay? So if I want to bring up Barron's, I just hit Barron's and Barron's comes up. Now, the way you get those in there is let's say um, for some reason I want Zidia and, and, and uh, Facebooks to be in the same folder. What I would do would be to put my finger on them until they jiggle, and then I would move Zidia right over on top of Facebooks and we create a folder and I would name the folder. I could name it whatever I wanted to name it. So I'll just leave it at news for right now, okay? And then to stop the jiggling, you hit the home button, and it stops. Now, if I go to that folder, there they are. And you say, well, wait a minute, they're in there. Um, that's how I would access them. Now, if I forgot where, this is another important thing, if I forgot where Zidia was, I can go to, uh, you hit the home button twice, let's see, you hit the home button once and then once again, and this search comes up. You hit the home button once and then once again, and the search will come up, and I hit, uh, I start typing it in. Ah, it says, there it is. And one of the features that they included this time is that it shows what folder it's in. Oh, it's in the news folder, okay? Because I had, you know, a lot of people, geez, you know, I forgot where I put Barron's. And so, uh, if I put Barron's in here, oh yeah, it's in the uh, finance folder. Um, okay, now, it always doesn't work, and I don't know why. But watch what happens when I put Merrill Lynch in. It comes up top hit. It doesn't come up with the folder, and I haven't figured out why, other than maybe it's a security thing with some of my Merrill Lynch apps. But if I go to the folder of my financial stuff, you'll see that that Merrill Lynch app is right there. It's right next to the AMX, uh, and Barron's is right there. If I, uh, but for some reason, the Merrill Lynch one, the Bank of America, and some of those other ones just come as top hits. They don't show where they're at. Could be a security thing. So let's get back to this folder that I set up for news. And I say, oh, you know what? I made a mistake. I really don't want that. How do I get rid of it? Well, I hit, put my finger on any one of them, and they start jiggling, and you drag them out. OK? And I go back in. You have to do them one at a time. I drag it out. And now the folder's gone. OK? Now, the other question that Don had was, um, Go back here and let's go back to and if you if you're at the home page, which is right here, 
one click. Uh, one click is the home page. If you hit it twice, this bottom thing comes up and shows all the apps that you have open. Okay, it also shows you your volume controls and music and so on. But every once in a while, you ought to go in here and close all your apps. And you have to do them one at a time. And the way you do it is you hold down on any one of them. I'll hold down on the iPhoto. And they come up. Now, you're not deleting the app. All you're doing is closing it out and resetting it. If you're having trouble with an app, an app freezes up, this is where to go, close it to start over. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to start closing these out. You see how many I have opened up, opened up, and they just sort of, if you let this go forever, you'll have a lot of them open, and they just sort of jam up your machine. Um, and now, they're all closed. But when I go and want to open one up again, this paper, which is one of my favorites, is now open. Uh, if I want to open up the Wall Street Journal, it's now opening. Now, if I go back down, double click, you'll see that those two are down there. Those are two that are open and ready to go. Same thing on the phone. Um, it, 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 say it's, it, it can save some of your battery usage because they're, they're sort of laying out there uh, not being used. They just, I, what I recommend is, is once a week just sit down and just close them off. Of it does give you more memory. There are some apps that show how much memory is being used and if you do what he just said, it improves the memory. Yeah. Reader, oh, Reader in Safari, that's a good one, I should have gone over that. Okay, so, uh, they enhanced Reader in Safari, and let me go and go over Reader. So, let's say, um, Okay, so uh, Reader and Safari is right is right uh, here, and we didn't go over this. This is the sheet. They call this the, the new sheet, and it's different for different apps. But um, for Safari, this is what it looks like. And when you hit that arrow at the top, it says, "What do you want to do with this page? Do you want to email the page? Do you want to text message it?" Twitter it, Facebooks, add it to your home screen, uh, print it, copy it, bookmark it, add it to the reading list. And we'll add it to the reading list. Now, when we go to the reading list, uh, our reading list is right down on the iPads, right down at the bottom where those glasses are. See them at the bottom there? Okay, go to there. And it says, this is, these are unread. It was the one I just put in there. Okay? And the big improvement is, is that they're, they're putting these in there and they're staying in your, in your device. So if you're getting ready to go on an airplane and you want to, there's a couple articles or something you want to read, you can save them here. And if you're not going to have Wi-Fi on the plane, you'll be able to bring them up. Because they're actually on your device. And if I go to the un, uh, that's the unread. If I go to the all, here are all of them in the hand. Okay? And I can go to any any particular one, just hit on it and bring it up. Okay? Um, does that answer your question about quick reading list? No, I actually, I thought it was.